typically the exact value at which a function has a local max or min is usually found by using calculus. However, a graphing calculator like a TI-83 or 84 may be used to approximate the max or min by using its maximum or minimum feature. So in this video I'm going to be using an 83, but the instructions for the 83 are the exact same as for an 84. So these are the instructions I'm just going to go over briefly. First thing you want to do is put your function into y equals, so press y equals and plug it into y1. Next you're going to press graph and make sure it shows up correctly. If it does not, you need to press the window button and adjust the viewing window so you can see the graph. Once you see it, you need to press second and trace and either select the maximum or the minimum feature depending on what you're trying to find. In the bottom left, it will ask for the left bound, so that means you're going to need to move your cursor to the max or the min and then go a couple more spaces to the left. Make sure it's clearly to the left of the extrema and then you're going to press enter. Then it's going to ask for the right bound, which means you're going to move your cursor to the max or the min and then go a few more spaces to the right. And then make sure your cursor is clearly to the right and then press enter again. Finally, it's going to say guess. That just means you hit enter one more time, and at the bottom it's going to give you the x and y value for either the max or the min. You need a round as directed, depending on the question. So we're going to find the local max and min of each function, and we're going to round to two decimal places as needed. So the first one we have is x cubed minus 3x plus 2. So we're going to use our calculator to find the max and the min. So here's our calculator. I'm going to turn it on. And so first things first, we're going to plug it into y equals. So x cubed minus 3x plus 2. x cubed minus 3x plus 2. So our function's put in. So we're going to hit graph to see if it shows. And it shows both the max and the min. So we don't have to change the window. Now we're going to go to our feature, so second trace, and we're going to find the minimum first. So here's our cursor, and so we're going to scroll over using the left or right button and get to the minimum. So it's right there, but now it says left bound. So we're going to go a couple spots to the left. Hit enter. Now it says right bound. So we're going to go back to where the minimum is, and then a couple spots to the right. Hit enter. And it says guess, so hit enter one more time. And so it thinks about it. And we have a minimum at one point, bunch of zeros. So we can say this is essentially just one and y being zero. So we have a min at one zero. Now we're going to find the max. Unfortunately, we have to start back all over again. So, well, not at the very beginning, just second trace and go back to maximum. And now take our cursor to where the max is and then a couple spots to the left. Hit enter, go back, and then a couple spots to the right for right bound. Enter and enter again. And this time we're going to get actual nice numbers. Negative one and Four. So there is the max and the min for this function. Max and min. No need to uh, round. Now we're going to go into this one. X to the fifth minus x cubed. So clear this off. So x to the fifth minus x to the third. And we're going to graph it and see what happens. So, not very good. It's really far in there. So we're going to have to adjust the window. So the window's at negative 10 and positive 10. I'm going to say, because it's really in there, negative 2 to positive 2, and negative 2 to positive 2. When you're adjusting the window, you really only need to be adjusting the x min and max and the y min and max. Leave everything else alone. You can adjust it, but until you get more used to it, I'd recommend just the mix, the max and the min. So we're going to hit graph again. We're going to see, and it does show much better this time. So now we can go in, 
and find our min. So our minimum is going to be over here, right about here. So we're going to go a few spots to the left, make sure it's definitely to the left. Hit enter, go back, and then go a few spots to the right. Enter, and then enter again. And it thinks about it, and here we have some decimals, which is okay. We see that it's x is 0.77, and y is point, negative 0.18, but because that 5, we're going to make this negative 0.19. So our min here is going to be 0.77 and negative 0.19. And now we're going to do it again for the max. So back to second and trace, maximum, and we're going to go back over to the right side, or left side, excuse me, for the max. A lot of clicking, so here we are, and a few spots to the left, then back up here, and then a few spots to the right. Click enter and enter again. And again, we have essentially the exact same numbers, but these signs have switched. But that's okay. Just makes it a little bit easier to see. So max is going to be negative 0.77 and positive 0.19. And that is the maximum for this function. And last, I'm sure we all see the decimals and are cringing at it, but it's okay. That's what the calculator is for. We're going to let it do the heavy lifting. So minus 0.6x squared plus 4x minus 6. And always double check when you have a bunch of stuff like this that you didn't miss a sign or something by mistake because the calculator might keep going and you won't know the difference. So it looks good. I'm going to hit graph. And I'm looking and eh, got something down there. So that means, that means I'm probably zoomed too far in. So let's get back out to what it was before. Negative 10 and positive 10. And we're going to graph it. Shows up. No, we got ourselves a max here, but our min's kind of off screen, so it's not going to work. But we can find the max real quick while we're here. So we're going to do our max. And again, to the max, but a little bit to the left. And then a little bit to the right. Enter and enter. And we're going to get a max at... 1.77 and negative 1.91. So max at 1.77 and negative 1.91. But now we're going to have to adjust our window to find the min because it's a little bit off screen. So go in there and I'm going to lower this down to negative 25. There we go. And you could adjust the window to do both at the same time, but I just did one at a time. And now I can go to the min and find it out. So the words cut it off a little bit, but that's okay. We see it's right about here. So a little bit to the left, enter, a little bit to the right, enter and enter one more time and we get a negative 3.77 and a negative 18.89 so our min is at negative 3.77 and negative 18.89 so the only thing i would recommend is just be careful when you're typing it in and if it if at all, if you're unsure, you can always go a few extra notches to the left or the right, just to make sure that you encompass either the min or the max.